Hi, my name is Michael. Um, let's see, this is the second video that I'm making. Um, it's an update to the last video that I made uh, about the antidepressants that I'm taking and uh, my experience on them and uh, how I felt they've been working for me. Um, so last time um, I made a clip, it was about four months ago. Four months ago I had uh, stopped taking um, my prior regimen of um, uh, combination of Welbutrin, Effexor, and um, Lithium. And um, I started taking an MAOI, uh, which was Nardil. Okay, so um, this was in September of 2022. Um, I started taking Nardil, um, first 45, then eventually 60 milligrams. Um, and with the Nardil, I noticed that, um, first of all, um, it felt a lot different than the SSRI or SNRI, which, the SNRI, which is a Fexor. Um, it felt different in that um, it was definitely a stronger uh, drug. Um, and I didn't notice that physically. I didn't notice any kind of, um, you know, those brain shocks that you get with... Um, SSRIs or SSRIs, if you miss a dose, um, the first thing was that if I missed a dose on an uh, MAOI, even if I missed two days of doses, I wouldn't notice any kind of physical effects from it. Um, so I felt like there was kind of a load of, there was more of a reserve of the medication uh, in my system. Um, <clears throat> the other thing... Um, in general, on uh, the Nardil, um, I felt just a general sense of being more protected uh, from another bout of depression. I think the Nardil worked better to get rid of my uh, depression um, than the, um, SS, the SNRI and the Wellbutrin that I was on prior to that. I don't think those medications were really doing anything for me, um, but the Nardil uh, definitely um, had an effect, but it also had the effect of a kind of emotional dampening, um, and I noticed that in a lot of ways. Um, for example, I just, um, so in situations like social situations, like uh, Christmas, dinner, um, I noticed that I just felt disinclined to really engage with anyone, um, not because of uh, any kind of social anxiety, but really because I wasn't, I felt um, kind of just uninspired um, or not really able to articulate myself in the way that I wanted to. Um, you know, I've taken in the past an antipsychotic, which was for a very brief period of time um, because it didn't agree with me. Um, and it was more of an experiment. It was um, uh, aripiprazole, uh, which is, I'm not sure what the brand name is, but it's aripiprazole. It's, a, it's an antipsychotic. And it felt, Nardo felt slightly akin to that which is kind of a bluntness, um, a flatness. Um, and uh, so I think in that way, it did uh, really protect me from uh, an, a bout of depression. I mean, I, I felt pretty secure. I, you know, working and stuff was, um, it was just, it went, it went okay. I didn't have to miss any, any work because of any depression or anything like that. You know, I was able to get tasks done. Um, but in general, I lost, um, I lost interest in music, which was pretty, um, which was a kind of a cure, uh, was a definite indicator that I had lost some kind of, um, I was less in touch with, uh, emotions. Um, and you know, I value the things about, you know, asking family members about what they've noticed. And a couple of people say that they didn't really notice a whole lot, except that I was more even keeled on Nardo. 
Um, and I think that just means that I was calmer and I was slightly less engaged socially. Um, oftentimes I can get kind of like passionate about a certain subject and go on and try and almost get a little bit too into um, a certain topic. And I didn't notice that that's, I think that that has not really been the case on this medication. Now, I, I'd probably stay on this medication. Um, I would have stayed on it. But I started, I've always been 150 pounds. Okay. Well, always, not always, but I've always, I've never been above 150 pounds. And this is considering all the medications that I've taken over the years. They've all had some kind of, in, uh, you know, disclaimer about potential um, weight gain. I've never had an issue with weight gain ever for anything. I eat all kinds of sweets all the time, and um, I've always stayed around 150. Now, after five months of taking Nardil, I went from 150 to 180. So I gained 30 pounds in five months on Nardil. And um, I knew I was gaining weight the entire time, but I was kind of reluctant to... to weigh myself on the scale because I knew the Nardo was working um, and I but I didn't think it was 30 pounds so and the speed at which I was gaining that weight seemed as if there was kind of a trajectory if I continued to take the Nardo I'd continue to gain weight and so I decided that I wanted to get off the Nardo and so that was about um, that was about a month and a half ago I got off the Nardo and instead, uh, you know, my, it's not really my psychiatrist. I mean, I did, I looked up the medication, did all the research and stuff and decided that I'd rather try and cross taper to something else that's in the same class. The closest thing to Nardil is um, isocarboxazid, uh, which is another MAOI. And it's also, I think they term it like Nardil light, right? And that's kind of how it's, I've noticed it. And it was, they're so similar those two medications um, that you can really just cross taper them. Uh, it, I switched from 60 milligrams of Nardil to uh, 60 milligrams of isocarboxazid uh, in a month in a cross taper. I didn't notice really any difference, really. Um, I don't notice any difference between these two drugs except for the one thing that the Nardo had that the isocarboxid doesn't have is it has a, a Nardo has a, an a, um, anxiety feature uh, kind of built into it that I noticed would kick in um, about like an hour after I took it. Now it wasn't any kind of anti-anxiety like uh, effect say like uh, Xanax or anything. It's nothing nearly that powerful. I mean it's almost undetectable. Uh, it's really subtle, but I noticed when I switched to the isocarboxazid that the um, that there was a little bit more anxiety. And so um, Nardil does have that um, anti-anxiety feature built into it. Um, otherwise, I don't notice a difference between the two. Now, I don't think that I'm gaining more weight, but um, I'm still, I've kind of leveled off at 180. So I think it is uh, Nardil that, um, that, you know, and I've looked up to, it seems like Nardil has, is kind of notorious for, um, causing weight gain. I mean, even between the, the MAOIs, um, and, you know, I, I'm glad that I took the MA, the MAOIs, I'm on the isocarboxes now, but I'm actually kind of uh, I'm gonna I, I I'm gonna try getting off of it because I I, I don't like um, the feeling of um, being kind of I feel like there's kind of a sense of indifference um, to social interaction and um, there it's definitely there's definitely a flattening effect uh, on my emotions but. The thing is that um, I know that Nardil and isocarboxazid did work, do work, and so it's kind of nice to have that, um, t 
to have that to fall back on because I know that if I do have another bout of, uh, you know, serious depression, the thing that I would go back to immediately would be isocarboxazid because I know that that would get rid of the depression and it would put me in kind of a maintaining state where I can work. I can continue doing all the things I have to do. Um, but, um, I'm going to, um, try and move on to trying a different medication, which is going to be the Avelity, which is, I've taken bupropion before. Avelity is a different uh, combination. It's just added cough syrup, basically, dextromethorphan. Um, you know, uh, at first I was concerned about a, an abuse potential, but it sounds like uh, dextromethorphan... Um, it's different than, it, it, it doesn't metabolize the way that cough syrup does. So you couldn't take the equivalent dose of dextromethorphan um, with the bupropion because the bupropion inhibits the breakdown of the um, cough syrup or the dextromethorphan. Um, and it's the metabolite of the um, dextromethorphan that causes the dissociate effects that you get if you drink a bottle of cough syrup. So I'm not um, uh, too worried about the abuse potential of it. I don't think that that's really possible. But I'm going to try um, that, which means that I'm going to have to get off of the Nardil, uh, unfortunately, um, and try and try something different. Um, it, it may work or it may not. Um, but anyways, that's what I wanted to um, mention is just about the the MAOIs. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I wasn't. Ex I really didn't know what to expect getting into it. So when I started, decided to start taking the the Nardo. Um, but um, I'm glad I did because uh, yeah, it, it's kind of it's definitely a medication that I would fall back on if. Um, if the other ones don't work, I, I think. And as far as the dietary restrictions that our people um, are so concerned about, I mean, I I ate a regular diet. Um, I didn't change my diet at all. Um, but I don't know, my metabolism might be different from other people's. So something like hard cheeses um, might be more problematic uh, for, for other people. So... Um, but I, th I think that it seems like um, I was more concerned about that uh, in the beginning, and I just kind of slowly um, tried different foods. I, I realized that there's um, it didn't raise or actually drop my blood pressure or anything. Um, so, okay, the next one, the next clip that I'll make will be um, about um, how this Avelity works. Luckily, I have insurance um, to pay for this because the Avelity is expensive. Um, okay, I'll talk to you later.